Hey there, and welcome to module four. And what we're going to do in this module is create killer content and show you how to funnel that traffic towards something for conversions. A very important point that most businesses don't even consider. They don't think, okay, we've got this traffic. Great. We've ranked in the search engines. Fantastic. And we'll get into ranking and that side of things later on. But what do you do when you actually get traffic? Well, here's the thing. A lot of people don't realize content is your free traffic source for your business and with the fantastic authority content that we're going to build you will be able to siphon that free traffic off from the search engines but you will also be able to create the instant perception of your natural authority it will come across in everything you do and that's one of the important things because when you talk to a prospect where you know a new visitor to your website if you don't establish that credibility very very quickly then they're going to wander off and find someone else that will now some sites are built with one thing in mind getting people to click on ads and then lose that customer to an ad well that's great but i like to be an intermediate i like to get them either engaged where i can control the message and the flow where that customer goes because they found alignment with their problem and my solution or and if they don't want to you know if it's not for them then they look at the ads as a secondary thing because here's the thing you've got all this effort to bring traffic to your website well those are potential customers so we want to convert them somehow to do something now maybe the end game is that you want them to click on an affiliate ad but you have a very specific one you want them to go to based on whatever your content is you and that way you can maximize your money because i'll tell you right now if you sell actual products maybe at digital or you've got a conversion maybe you want to build a client base then that's fine your profits are going to be much higher than people clicking on ads for really to be profitable with ads you need a lot of visitors and then send them off to different places but if you've just got a few hundred visitors or a few thousand visitors and you want to convert them to a specific offer it's far better to convert them and lead them to one specific solution it's a very true fact that if you give customers too many choices uh they'll get confused and literally back away because there's too many choices we want to give them basically one main choice and that's it that's why sales pages are so powerful they do exactly this they take a customer hook them with um, four principles of copywriting called ADA attention interest desire action and they all focus on one call to action which is to press the add to cart button well we're doing the same thing except what we're doing is with our authority content we're leading them down to one particular piece of action so what we're doing here is not only cementing your authority but we're also creating raving fans who will listen to you in your business and come to you as the authority content. And with all the changes in the search engines that are out there, the base standard is that they reward authority. Okay. Now, this is their motto. We reward authority. This is where the search engines, this is the message we get from them on a daily basis. So we need to create that. So we give them and your future customers exactly what they want, which is rich, authority, unique content. We also compel action from our visitors. We've got to. That is our bread and butter. So we direct them to a free solution or a download or something that we control. So what what is that? Well, it depends on your business. For example, if you're a local real estate uh, business, maybe you give a download of all of the latest uh, best bargain properties or 10 tips to find the perfect house or uh, 10 ways to avoid bad realtors. But now here's the thing, they're looking to a realtor, obviously they're gonna, it's gonna be geared towards everything you do. But again, it's a free download to capture their information somehow. Uh, so there's all sorts of ways we can do that. I mean, that's just a real estate example. Um, for other people, it could be, hey, you know, um let me make up an example i'm just trying to think of an industry real quick maybe we're talking about acne cures here's a th another example so uh 10 ways or 10 dangers of 
over-the-counter creams. Perfect. If you're selling natural and your focus is natural home remedies, if you give away something that says the 10 dangers of over-the-counter um, skin creams, well, then you've already, first of all, you've cemented the problem that you may be already tackling, which is natural skin care and natural acne cures don't use these harsh chemicals. So you talk about all the different chemicals that are in acne care and all the long-term damage it can do to your skin and stuff like that. You know, you're basically educating your customer to be a smarter customer. And when you've got a smarter customer that you've personally educated, you are seen, again, as that cemented authority figure. Now, there's all sorts of ways we can do that, and we'll cover those some of those in this module. So, again, we want to structure content for maximum results, but how do you actually do that? Well, here's some of the critical elements for content. First of all, you've got to have a powerful, engaging headline. Something that is going to get attention. Now, I'll give you, an, I mean, I'll use another example. Stick with the acne one for a moment. If I wrote an article that says the dangers of, um, or the, the one secret the pharmacies won't tell you. That's a fairly compelling argument or, uh, or headline that will make you want to read. I'm talking about the secret that they won't tell you. Well, obviously, if you're concerned about um, skin creams and you're on a natural acne cure site, then that's something that will hook you in. Another one with real estate. Um, five tips for a better sale. There's another uh, great one as well, because if someone's coming to you to sell a home, you've got five tips to, you know, to sell your house in 90 days or something like that. You know, something that's a time period. That would work very well for a realtor. So there's all sorts of ways you should hook things in. You, you don't say what's in the article, but you hint at it. You create curiosity, and that's the main thing. You want to get attention. Next, you can go to 500, 700 words in length, but, you know, I would actually change that. It depends on your market, but if you can go to 1,000 to 2,000 words... That is seen as real high authority. Now, another one, short paragraphs, two to three sentences each. One thing I learned from some of the top copywriters in the world, who are very good friends of mine, is that people have the, you know, the, it, it's, it's more difficult to read online than it is with a physical piece of paper in front of you. So short, snappy sentences and paragraphs help with the flow of reading. It makes life a lot easier and a lot more. You've got to kind of think about your particular prospect when you're doing this and break it up with subtitles because these are pattern breaks and it's just nice bite sized chunks of information. I always also include an enticing image, something that gets attention and it acts as a visual anchor to your content. And a lot of people just put in generic stuff, even if they put in image at all. But it gives you a certain amount of authority if you use stock photography, and I'll cover that in a few moments as well. Also, one important aspect is write for a seventh grade audience. So, you know, you're kind of 12-year-old vocabulary level. Now, it's, you might be surprised, but that copywriters have proven time and time again that writing at that level, no complex technical talk, Unless your market is specifically very high-end, I'll give you an example, investment firms. They're wanting to talk to other brokers or something like that. Then you've got to talk the language of your market. Uh, for acne cures, then obviously you want to keep it low. Uh, you want to aim towards kind of teenagers who your primary market is. And you uncovered that from the research earlier on. But if you're talking to a technical group like you're in computing then, yeah, obviously you need to talk some of the, uh, the technical language as well. But in general, your general mass market, um, it's better to aim at that lower level where possible. So those elements are critical. If you need to write just 500 word articles, fine. But I do recommend going to the much higher end. And if you're having other people write your articles like I do, then, you know, you can use that as a guide plate. You say, hey, write me a 1,000 to 2,000 word article. Perfect. That gives authority. So what else? You really want to answer four simple questions in every article. Now, this is one of the secrets of copywriting I learned from a very good copywriter. And uh, I'm going to be using this a lot myself 
in a lot of the stuff we do. And I've been doing experiments with this. It has worked phenomenally well. So, f first question is, why them? What's the problem? Why are they on here and what should they, you know, what is their issue? You need to identify with that in the first paragraph or so. You want to hook them in with interest, but make sure you also align with their problem. Identify exactly what they're going through, their emotions and everything else. That way you've got them. That's basically a hook because you they know that you're talking about them and their particular problem. And then again, somehow roll in why you. Cement your authority. If you're, for example, um, a professional consultant in real estate or a real estate broker, then say, you know, in my 15 years as a real estate broker, boom, that's why you, you know your subject. And after selling, you know, or after selling thousands of homes in the last three years, again, showing results, plus you know what you're talking about. With acne cure, you know, um, I would say something like, as a former acne victim, so what you've done is you were in their shoes, but now you are a former acne sufferer and you've obviously cured it they haven't you're more authoritative than then on the subject because you know what you're talking about um another example let me think um say dog training which is what we're building our site about so you know after training so many dogs over the years and you know or um you know having trained hundreds of dogs or what have you you know same kind of thing whatever you're doing you cement that in there why you? Why are you in a better position to communicate this message to them? And what they will do is, okay, okay, well, this guy does know more than me, or this lady does know more than me, I'll continue. And that's what you want them to do. Once you do that, you've got them engaged, you're good to go. Then, what you need to do as you go through the body of the content and everything else, is why this? So, what I tend to do is talk about a specific situation, and then I try to at the end of that, lead it down to why they should download the guide or whatever the freebie is. So right now, that's the why this, the solution. So uh, if you're, for example, talking about acne cures and we're talking about, um, you know, the secrets the pharmaceutical companies won't tell you that, and maybe I'm talking about the uh, fact that one of the main leading chemicals, which has gone out of my head, I'll be quite honest, in acne skin creams, can actually damage your skin and it's been linked in recent studies to cancer well maybe that i that's one of the things i'll talk about i'll talk about in a cancer study and yada 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 and then um so what i'll do is at the end of that article say there are actually a lot more dangers to um skin creams and over-the-counter creams things that they won't tell you but you can download a free report here and it will show, you know, tell you all about them. And again, then I present them with an option to sign up. But I also, uh, also want to add in the why now. Why must they take action now? So I give them a reason, you know, that, that uh, you know, these are dangers you probably uh, didn't know about. And you need to make sure that you are fully informed before it's too late. Now, if you, I'm talking about, a, you know, that certain skin creams have been linked to cancer and I've got even more information about it, but there's a danger to them or there's some sort of risk or maybe there's some sort of scarcity that this report is going to be pulled down any moment because of pressure from the pharmaceutical companies. I'm using a you know, broad scope example, but you get the idea. And if you answer these four questions you will have a lot of signups and conversions. And that is very important. So, the content process. What exactly is the content process? Well, earlier on, you should have generated about 10 to 20 target keywords. And you want to write an authority value article for every single one of them. And you want to lead them to a free giveaway or an area where they will sign up or some sort of action you want them to take. Now, the reason we do this, I like to actually capture their information and then I will use, and we'll cover this in later modules, an email sequence, which we will write, which will talk and give them more value. We give them the download 
And then after that, we'll either, because um, we'll build rapport, trust and confidence with our base, we can then lead them to other products, our own products, or some other form of action. Um, I did this recently with a business coach who was an offline marketer and now wants to bring their business online. So we built a complete online funnel where they got a free download, get to know them in a lot more detail, and then they expose their customers to more of their products and things they've got going on. But they've already established the authority, the trust, and the confidence. And that is exactly what we're doing here for you. We want you to build authority, trust, and confidence with your market so that the customers you get, the traffic and conversions you get, listen to you. If you have a recommendation to make, you're going to make more sales. And this is one thing that a lot of people don't realize. And I'm going to stand on my soapbox for a moment. A lot of people, when they get education courses um, that teach marketing online, they basically say, hit them hard with ads, hit them hard with ads, and hope for the best. I much prefer a much more controlled, foundational way because that creates long-term business. I mean, there are people out there that throw up websites with a great big affiliate offer in there and try and get as much traffic as they can and hope for the best. Well, if this person's never heard of you, why the hell would they listen to you? You have no authority. You have no credibility if you do that. So we try and establish that to create a long-time business. That's why I want you to really study the market research aspect to say, okay, well, I could create a business online about this. Maybe you create five or six income streams just like that. That's fine. Because once you've put all this on autopilot, you can certainly create many of these authoritative sites. Now, one thing your customers need to feel is they got real value from you. So when they're going through the article, it needs to be concise. It needs to be to the point. It needs to provide real information that either they can act on or helps them with their point of view and moves them further forward. So with that being said, got a few things we're going to do in the rest of this video. We're going to actually jump in. I'm going to make some extra tweaks to the website we were working on. And then we're going to get some actual content written for us. I'm not actually writing these um, articles that we're going to put on the website. So let's dive in. So here's our website. You can see I actually uploaded a header. I made this header um, very quickly for our website. I've also put an AdSense ad widget in here. And I'll show you how to do that in just a few moments. And uh, we got everything kind of rolled up. We haven't got uh, any article except the demo post. So what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly go through some of the stuff I've done. First of all, I created a Gmail account because I'm going to use some of their services. Um, we're going to use analytics, we're going to use webmaster tools and things like that. So we'll do that in a few moments. I also set up some email accounts. Um, admin at Dogs Day Magazine, Chris Masters, who's going to be my pseudonym for this. Contact for general contacts and then social when I sign up with social media accounts. Because one thing I do recommend you do is sign up for Twitter, Facebook and Google Plus. Also a YouTube channel as well, which is part of your Google account, or it will be associated with that. So that's why I created a separate ID. So there's several things we can do just to get rocking and rolling and getting this kind of built up with some authority content. So what we're going to do is quickly make up some, um, well, we're going to add some extra optimization here to the website. So Dogs Day Magazine, I need to go into the WP admin. Okay, so logging in, and what we're going to do is you'll see here, we've got some basic stuff. We don't have much of a menu yet, and we don't have any privacy policies and things. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually going to come to plugins, and I'm going to add a, po a policies plugin. So we'll do, um, let me see, it's WP policies. Whoops, helps if I actually type it right, doesn't it? do that and this is the one I want now with um, the actual privacy policies you want to make sure if you're using AdSense ads for example that you make sure you include what's called the dart double cookie 
Now, uh, you can find that on uh, Google AdSense about that and edit your privacy policies accordingly. But now you see we've got a few things on this page. For example, we got the connect to WordPress. You know, I'll do that real fast. Um, what if you create a WordPress.com account? Um, it gives you access to stats tracking and some other cool stuff. So you need to actually create an account. So let's actually get started. And we'll create one. Um, I let's see, Dogs Day Magazine. Now you might be wondering why are we doing that? Well, we just want the username and password. Um, so I'm gonna actually set this up. I'll do this through. Oh, let's see. Actually, we'll use the social at Dogs Day Magazine. Come, and then we'll create the free blog but we just want the free account because that's what hooks in with the plugin called jetpack now we will get an email over here to our social one so i'm just going to log into webmail and check here we should get the verification here we go activate blog now we're not actually creating the blog at this time, although I'm gonna skip through these steps. And done deal. Okay, so we do ha now actually have a blog, but the main thing is that we now connect to wordpress.com with our account, and that activates the plugin called Jetpack. Now, I'm already logged in over there, so it probably, it'll either prompt you for the username and password, but because I'm already logged in over there, I'm good to go, and I get things like stats, um, if people comment, we can actually get their email internally here. We get all sorts of social sharing plugins. We get the spelling and grammar and all sorts of cool extra bits and pieces that are actually very cool. They are actually very, very powerful and can help a lot. Now, um, one other thing is the Jetpack comments plugin, which I like a lot as well, but uh, you have to click on that and we'll empty the cache I guess it's not going to allow me to activate that maybe it's because of a conflict but okay we'll not actually worry about that I'll let that roll so anyway we got that set up now with the policies um, slightly different cover WP policies it's the one we installed and we will actually Go ahead and let's see here. Fill in this base information. I'm going to create a base town. I don't know. Let me just use. I'm going to use my. Uh, let's just go one, four, two, th three. I'm just going to call this uh, make up a street here. Um, right Street. <laughs> oh, actually, that's the company name. That would help. Okay site name okay and I'm gonna paste that down there and we'll just call it dogs day magazine um, and then I'll put this in Rancho Cucamonga California uh, I won seven Rio something like that I'm gonna use a basically a fake address here but just because of this demo um, 909 444 <laughs> and something like that and I'll use a contact email contact at dogs day magazine so we're all good to go with that update options that's good now we have to import the files import the policies and what will happen is it will go through and it will actually create these pages for you. Now, some of them you don't need. For example, you might not need medical disclaimer if you are not working on a medical website or something that gives medical advice. If you're using Acme, you might want to. It really depends. Now, they also give you this, which you can put in your footer, and that will enable all of these. Um, I'm not going to do that in this case. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show you because... Here's the thing, as I'm doing this, 
I'm building a business from the ground up and I want to show you everything. Now, there might be some technical stuff and you might be thinking, well, you know, that's not for me. We'll get outsourcing, get someone to do it for you. It doesn't really matter. But I am going to look through here real quick. So terms of use, okay, the one I don't need is the earnings disclaimer and medical disclaimer. So I'll, turn, I'll delete those. It loads in quite a few good ones. So it's it's always good to actually look at and study them and see, oh, well, I need that one or I don't need that one. Now, if you want to edit them, just click on edit and it will take you to the page because it actually creates pages for each one of these. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab this line and I'm going to copy that. And then if you want to edit your template, because a lot of people don't know some of this advanced stuff, go to appearance and editor. And usually a lot of themes have a file called footer.php. You can see it right here, for example. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to see what's in the bottom where now, again, you don't have to, um, as I say, be a programmer here. If you want someone else to do this for you, then certainly go ahead and have that done. What I'm looking for, again, I've not been in this template before, is I want to see if there's anything here that would indicate where to put, here we go, entity decode theme option footer message. That is kind of where we would put it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add what's called a new line, a BR, and then I'm gonna paste that in there. And let's update that. Now, I'm like I say, I don't know whether this is gonna work, or not and how it's going to look again this would be where you would get someone i know i could do this but let me have a look okay well there's there's our stuff i'm fine with that we just need to centralize it a little bit but if, yeah again if you don't have if your theme that you choose may be different or you could do exactly what we just did here what i am going to do though is wrap what's called a center tag around this so you can see i'm doing uh less than center greater than these are the HTML tags. And then I'll do the same here. But I'll do the close off. And when you do a close off, it has a forward slash center. So I'll update that file. And again, I don't want to get bogged down in the technicals. Um, some of the people watching this are not technically minded. You know, that's perfectly okay. You don't have to be. But you can see now we've got all the stuff we need here. And if we click on these, it goes right across to the privacy policy. And we can see that's the privacy policy right there. And what we do need to do is change, for example, we've got social sharing on these sites, on these pages, and a comments box. So what we can do now is go to all pages, and then go to each one of these. You can do a quick edit, and then turn off comments, update. And if I do that for each one of these, I'll go to the privacy policy, quick edit, just to show you done update and then if I go back here you'll see that the comments are now turned off so very powerful and very very quick as well now I want to get rid of these social buttons because I don't like these particular ones and I want more control over them with this theme you can't actually control turning them on or off per page so I'm going to come over to appearance and themes oh actually i'm going to come to options here and layout i'll come to here and turn off facebook twitter and google plus buttons so i want more control over them i don't want i only want those on certain ones so if we refresh that now our policies page is now pretty much a lot better than it was you can see that right there so okay good and we can check a couple of the other ones for example whoops terms of use let's go there and there's our terms of use and uh, go through all make sure everything's cool and if you don't like them you can actually go back to WP policies and edit so now we got a lot more stuff kind of lined up and, and rolling I like that that's a lot better but we haven't got any menu items here we'll come to our menu stuff later on because we want to kind of funnel some stuff in here and get some stuff set up maybe we've got some categories right now we've got an uncategorized one so what I want to do is change that we're going to go to categories post categories and we're just going to call this blog so I'll quick edit call it blog and blog again 
that's cool because you know, uncategorized doesn't look very good, does it? So again, we'll um, come back here, click on, actually we'll refresh, and we'll just click on blog. And that gives a list of all of the recent blog posts. So you can see that there's one here, hello world, and uh, continue reading. So very, very good looking, but we've only got the one post at the moment, but we'll be adding to that very shortly. So that's all good. So again, let's have a look. We're, I'm just going to scan of the site. We got no featured stories. You know, let's do. Let's set up the, some of the the Google stuff that I mentioned real quick because we're doing a little bit of formation before we start funneling and creating content. So this video might be a little bit long uh, because I really want to make sure I give you all the information, show you how you set up a site from scratch. So what I'm going to do is let's go sign up with Analytics. Uh, so what we'll do is analytics.google.com. And like I say, watch this, go through it, work through it alongside everything, no problem at all. But we'll create an account, we'll log in with our password, and that will help us a lot. So, okay, good, sign up. We're good to go. And we want to set it up for Dogs Day Magazine, just as we'll do that. Website URL, HTTP, and we can just copy and paste, I guess, dot com. And then industry category, we're eight hours behind. So let's just do, let's see, um, which one's the best one for us? I'd say, let's go with retail, I guess, because I will try and sell something. Um, data sharing with other Google products and anonymously with Google and others. I tend not to, uh, it's entirely up to yourself, but uh, run through, always read the uh, Google Terms of Use and any terms of use you sign up for. I'm skipping it because I've read it a hundred times. But we're pretty much good to go. And what we need to do is get the tracking code. So what are you tracking? A single domain. You could have one domains with subdomains if you want to. I'm not going to in this case, but I just want you to grab that script. And now some themes allow you, uh, and I'm just copying that, Put it in a notepad and save it somewhere but some themes allow you to actually insert this code right into their settings now i'm i don't know about this one so i'm gonna have a look real quick so i'm going back to appearance and options and i'd like to see okay that's themes design i'm just scanning real quick see what is in here okay home and uh Okay, not seeing anything in there. And then let's go to general. Um, footer information, no, nothing in there. So what we would need to do is come back to appearance editor and put it put this code in the footer. So let's go over here and then we'll come to footer. And you need to put this just above what's called the closing body tag. That's this right here, okay? So right above that, we put in our Google tracking code. Now, some people, here's the funny thing. Some people say, oh, you don't wanna let Google see what you're doing on the inside. Well, that's true if you're doing anything what's called black hat. And black hat means basically you're doing things you probably shouldn't be with uh, websites, but we're creating authority. And one thing that tells Google, because remember Google gets over 80% of the searches is you're showing, hey, we got nothing to hide. We're an authoritative and real business. That's what we're doing. Again, that's gonna help you with long-term success. So now that we've done that, I'll make sure I actually save that. I think I did, but I'll make sure. And okay, I did, oh yes, I did. Update the file, good. So we'll come over here, save. And you can actually track traffic one of the cool things in real time. Now, we're doing two things. We're using and we've activated Jetpack, which allows us to track internally as well. And the reason I do that, I like to have multiple uh, stats trackers because you get a better picture. Google Analytics is not perfect. WordPress stats is not perfect. Uh, so I like to compare all of these things and say, okay, what is going on? So uh, I like to really get an idea of all the traffic. So here's 
our base site. And usually this is 24 hours behind. But if we go real time and go overview, and we'll refresh this page and go in here. Now, one thing I need to do, <laughs> which is a, a by the by, you can see this. Actually, I love this. You see that when you roll over it, boom, it changes that. It's a lot more information, but it's me. I don't want it to be me. I want it to be someone else. So I need to go change the email attached to this and set up a gravatar and then a bio picture. But I do like this. This is actually pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> and then you can see right now there's one person on the site. That'll be me. And you can see in literally in the last minute, it gives you a timeline and we were on the Hello World. And it'll also tell me that I was in California in Hisperia, which is where I am. And this is great. Love this. So very, very powerful stuff. So anyway, we could, I suppose I should really quick, go change the Gravatar. And uh, we're not actually getting to the content, but I do, like I say, I do want to give you a basis here. So what we'll do is um, create an account. Okay, so let's just see um, my account. I don't actually have one. Where's the sign up? Okay, I probably need to log out. Okay, whoops. Enter an email to get started. So we'll do admin at dogsdaymagazine.com. Confirmation email sent. So I'll have to come back to our email, which is not this one. So we'll come to admin. And access email. Now, again, when you set up your emails, you can set them up to work with your regular email program, like Outlook or Thunderbird or what have you. So we'll just verify this. Then username, uh, we'll just call it Dogs Day Magazine. Again, keep a little, one thing I do, and I recommend you do too, is keep a little Excel file with all your usernames and passwords in. It makes life a lot easier in the long run, especially when, I mean, I use a tool here, it's actually, I recommend this, it's called OnePass, that remembers a lot of my stuff for me, and I can uh, use it across all of my computers, and they sync up. I use it with a that in combination with Dropbox, and then it syncs up with one password file, which means whichever computer I go to, as long as I've got access to my Dropbox, um, and I've got an internet connection, it actually serves everything I need up, it's great. Um, Dogs Day Magazine exists. Okay, well, um, dogs. I'm very surprised that Dogs Day Magazine help, uh, is is taken. Um, okay, well, let's try Chris Masters. Check. Okay, Dogs Day Magazine. Okay, that's a really long username. Guarantee that one's available. Okay. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. So definitely need to uh, remember that password. And I'm also going to add that to my keychain so I don't forget that, especially being so long. Okay, so we're logged in. We're going to uh, manage my Gravitars. And we don't actually have one. So what I'm going to do, and this is where I, I say that things like stock photography comes in useful. I'm going to create one. I'm just going to create a dog trainer. Again, this is going to be for my Gravatar, so I want to see if there's anything with guy and a dog. That's that's what I'm looking for. Something that cements what you are and who, who you are. Um, okay, so that's one I could use with a Siberian Husky. Interesting. I just wanted to see if there was anything. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a big dog fan, so I see this one with the, the funny dog here. It made me laugh for a second there. Um, um, okay, let's just see. Dog trainer, man. Because this is a gentleman we're using, so... Okay. That's good. It tends to be the same guy here. Uh, interesting. Could do that. 
wanting it with a smile and authoritative. Okay, yeah, we'll use that. Now, the thing, I'm using deposit photos here, it's because they're very cheap. So I like, I like that. Um, okay, that one's pretty cropped in with the dog, so that's good. So we'll do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, now that I downloaded that, I can close that window, I actually come to the right Gravatar window. So it looks like you don't have any images. Add one by clicking here. And we'll do it from the computer. Browse. And then we'll look in our downloads folder, which has the picture. And open, and then click on next. Now this will allow you to resize and crop as you see fit. So obviously we want to be close in here as much as possible, but get the dog in as well, because I think that's going to be an interesting shot. Again, that will cement our authority as a dog trainer. Crop and finish. And then it's rated G. And we're good to go. Now, what will happen now is we've used uh, admin at this. So what we need to do is now change the user because I used myself in this one. So we'll go to your profile as the admin. And then we'll come down here and change this to admin at dogsdaymagazine.com. That'll make life easier. And we'll change the username you can't change, but let's change the nickname to Chris Masters. And uh, you can add your website in here. Uh, I am oh, sorry. <laughs> That's out of habit. Dogsdaymagazine.com. And then if you have your Google Plus and your Twitter username, which we will add later. I'm assuming, let's just say that we've got this. Um, Dogs Day Magazine. Um, Google Plus, if we, if we set that up, which well, let's do that real fast. We, okay, we set this up. Let's see. Go, uh, we'll go to uh, let's do a search for Google Plus. Let's create our profile. So Google Plus, and then we'll come over here. Uh, and we'll have the little button join Google Plus. I forgot it's right there. So Chris Masters mail January 1st and then we're good to go. So we'll upgrade the account. The name you entered doesn't match our policy. Um, okay, so probably doesn't like the word Masters, I guess. I don't know. Um, okay, you know what? Let's see. We'll just go the dog trainer. Now, now that I don't think we'll pass either, but we'll have a look. No, okay. Let's try Masterson. Let's see if that will work. Okay. Yes, it was the word Masters. I was kind of wondering about that. It's a very strange one. But I'm not going to follow any of these kind of weird people and, and stuff like that if they're not relative to me. So we'll just continue. Uh, continue anyway. And then, again, we'll snap a photo. Actually, no, I don't want to snap a photo. <laughs> you don't want to uh, see me right now. So, okay. Well, let's just select a computer from our, photo, uh, our computer. Go to Downloads. Grab that same photo. And, again, we'll crop in kind of tight. You can see how this creates your uh, stuff here. Okay, well, I guess it's not letting me resize. Okay, so I guess it needs a certain size, so okay, that's fine. We'll just centralize that and set as profile pic. And boom, done deal. And then we'll set up just basic information. Um, where do you work? Um, dogs. Day magazine job title um, trainer and then you can add, uh, you know create a profile for yourself. I do recommend that you actually create a main profile for yourself. Okay, let's get rid of all this. And uh, okay, so we're good. We got a basic setup. Now what you need to do is get your profile and everything else. So to do that, click on here, click on account. And then go to 
profile and privacy and you get this right here so good that's your plus information and what you can do now is you can add that right there so you are good to go you can add biographical data if you want to and let's just say chris masters so i made up a quick bio again you copy and paste that if you like save that for other sites and uh, you are good to go so i'm going to update that now and uh, what will happen is actually if i copy and paste that onto our google plus profile as well you can come here and edit your profile do whatever you need to do for example if i click on profile edit profile and then uh, one thing we'll also do is come this is actually for google plus this is very helpful because it helps with authorship click on other profiles and then add custom link and we'll say dogs day magazine now here's the thing this is something a lot of people don't realize is that you know if you've seen in google results you might see someone's picture next to a result this is exactly why this is basically saying you're the authority behind that dogs day magazine.com so we'll save that and then uh, we'll add but the really cool thing with that is that uh, people really you know will see as they're looking through results if you see 10 results talking about a particular problem one has a picture next to it of someone with a dog which is you which one do you think they're going to click on so it really does help a lot so um okay so we'll do that and we'll add that in there brief description so i put in a quick little tagline there as well and what i put was dog training expert who helps you have a happier Oops, oops, I don't drag that over there. Happier, healthier, and behaved dog. So I'm addressing some of the problems that people in my market will have, but they also want their dog to be happy, healthy, and behaved. So we'll get all that in a tagline, and then we are good to go. So we got all that in there. We could change the cover photo, but I'm not going to do that right now. We're getting way off track from the actual content. <laughs> but what we're doing is really optimizing our site. So I'm going to update this profile. And again, come back over here. Hopefully this all will change. And uh, we'll do that. So here we go. About Chris Masters. And uh, again, we might want to change that username. You see that? It's a bit long. So, okay. Okay, let's see. We can do all sorts, I guess. We can change this or create another account. I'm going to leave it for now because I don't want to get off tangent any worse than I already am but you get the idea so there's a picture of us more of a profile and uh, we're good to go so with that being said let's finally <laughs> get to the actual content so, okay I'm going to close some stuff down now okay so we'll do that do that close that um, close that And we'll come to getting some content done. So, okay, one of the services I might use for writing content is Text Broker. I've used these guys for years. And they have content writers in hundreds and hundreds of subjects. They are pretty fast turnaround. You can approve the quality. You can choose the quality of the writer and uh, do very well with that indeed. Another service I use if you're not writing your own content is iRider now this is uh, controlled and owned by a very good friend of mine Brad Callum and uh, he has a team of writers all over the world who work here they either have content written so you could you know as the content needer you can go in or the, the person who requires content you can go in here create an account or if you want to you can actually earn money by writing content as well for other people whatever you want to do but you can get stuff done as low as 125 an article but like i say you really want to focus on good authority content uh, another place that's pretty reasonable is 99 cent articles uh this again they are all english writers uh which when you're getting articles written you've got to be careful because sometimes the articles you get back are not very understandable if they're written in a uh, country where English is not their first language so you, you you have to 
kind of bite the bullet either write the content yourself but if you you know and i to do that i like to read lots of stuff about the subject i mean and again that's why i said if you're interested in the topic you know the thing is i i don't consider what i do work i love what i do so i don't consider it work where i have to then go study all this kind of stuff about my market and my business because it really is critical that you have an in active interest in there and a passion for learning now if you don't want to um what you could do is like i say have someone else do it so i'm gonna go create an account here for this so i'm gonna uh let's see oh, clients and then new registration and again we'll do admin at dogsdaymagazine.com create an account and confirm okay they won't let me do it without hear how they heard about me so okay we'll do that how do you hear about us google there you go i'll leave it at that okay so remember the password they've sent an email so again we'll come over here actually i should have come over here access webmail go back to round cube and here's the email so we'll click on this so we're in the admin panel now we've logged in and verified our email what we do need to do is start the wizard now if you click this it's going to tell you oh there's errors because we haven't got some information from you so we'll just put in our information chris masterson as we seem to have changed our name to uh name of the contact well chris masterson would be a start it's kind of a silly question then the address and then we can copy that i'm just gonna do one two three some street actually this is going to be billing information i expect so let's make sure that we actually put something in there i'm gonna uh leave that blank right now because if i need to change that for billing obviously i want to uh put in my real information so uh but i don't want to <laughs> display that too actively here so I'm going to blank this out as I do this. Actually, I'm going to put my real information in here just so that if this does become a contact information. So the next thing is to deposit funds. Now, what I'm going to do is I've already uh, deposited $200 in here. And again, you can think, well, how much is my article going to be? It'll cost you anywhere from about 6 bucks to 10 bucks, maybe slightly more but you're gonna get a lot better quality for that. That's the whole point here. So there is a premium to pay for getting content written for you and good quality content, but you've got to make sure that you've got people who can write and write very well, and you're free to kick back any article you don't like, that doesn't quite make sense, and that doesn't follow your instructions. So I've already deposited some money in here, so let's create a project. So I'm gonna call this the Dog's Day magazine project and then okay there's no open orders within this so that's fine and then let's create an order so what I'm gonna do is we'll do what's called an open order which will be shown to all selected uh, authors okay so uh, based on their quality rating now you can also if you have a over time what's called a team order or a direct order. If you have, and you find authors who are very, very good, and you wanna hold on to them, you can add them to um, your group and work with them directly. So if, you, if you're brand new to this and you haven't determined which authors are good and which ones are not, then do an open order to start with, but keep an eye on the good authors and add them to a team later on, and you can actually work very, very, uh, directly with those and it makes things a lot easier so I'm going to place an open order so I'm going to say project is going to be Doug's Day magazine category animals uh, quality level that's I'm going to go with I usually go with uh, three to four stars you can go with five stars but you can see five star writers it's almost three times the price so I'm going to go with a four star writer I want it to be about let's just say 500 actually no i'm going to go let's try 7, 700 to a thousand 
and we will processing time we'll give them a week to process this and then we want a keyword check repeat each keyword two to three times um, so we'll see what's going on there that's kind of average plurals inflections on connecting words let's have a look yeah that's kind of that's fine and that, that I kind of like okay so when you do this you need to actually enter the title in the keywords and write your own title I'll show you an example I've got my list of keywords up here that I'm gonna target and these are ones from my research and everything else that I found I thought these are pretty good uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a couple here and let's have a look um, let's see dog rescue Scotland okay let's pick one up that I like here now for my research these are ones that uh, have a lot of searches but less competition um, let's go with cheap dog cages as an example and I'll do say that's the keyword and then I'll say cheap dog cages are they really worth it so something like that um, or you know I want to get something compelling to get them to read so uh, you know, I usually like to ask a question so um, can they hurt your dog because they're cheap okay fine let's have a look so we'll and then we'll do something like that and then what I like to do this this is one of the things you can add the next title and we'll what we'll do is I'll get a couple written oops I'm clicking on the wrong icon starting up one of my other text editors so we'll ignore that and yes edit so let's grab another one for them to write as well uh, compare dog food so that's the title and you notice I'm putting the type the keyword at the beginning um, a fair comparison of all the top brands of dog food and here's another thing a little trick I do you notice here that I'm doing comparison of dog food I'm doing basically using the keyword spread out through the second part of my keyword that's called double tapping another thing I do is I use an ellipse at the end which is a way to basically say in copyright terms continue on so that's another little trick there I'll give you and then I'll do I could do a few more but then you also have your description to the authors basically the instructions now for the order description I've also included and you'll see this link below where you can get the article description basically it's instructions to the authors so I'm just gonna paste this in here and, and go over it real quick I say each article must be written with good sentence structure and short paragraphs with no more than four sentences per paragraph subtitles must be used with you know basically every two to three paragraphs so it's nice and well broken up where and should contain the keyword or related terms and the first subtitle must contain the primary term so we make sure that we've got our keywords loaded pretty well the sentence or the keyword must be used in the first and last sentence of the article which is another little SEO tip there uh, SEO is search engine optimization basically we are optimized for the search engines to look at what we have and we cover that we are writing to a seventh grade or 12 year old level of reading and that should actually be of so my grammar and spelling is terrible as well which is always funny when I'm telling article writers what to do and my grammar and sentence structure is terrible myself I always say that any article not conforming to these requirements will be rejected contest contact us directly if you have any questions now I'm going to tell you right now if you do have a author who's not sure about the subject or something specific for example one of my keywords on my list was about dogs um, for example uh, dog breeds alphabetical they might have some questions how do you want to form this you're gonna have to be the decision maker you're gonna have to determine and specify exactly what you want so that they can perform that so you're gonna have to be flexible and jump in and take care of some of this stuff 
so no problems on that you've just got to like like i say be proactive and decide okay well what could i do there what, what would work you remember you're the marketer you're the business owner these guys are basically your temporary employees writing for you so if you say well you know i want a table of dogs names but have a introduction about what the list is and about and then a conclusion sentence it's basically what we call link bait so that could work pretty well so the other cool thing is you can save this as a template and you can call it say base authority content and then you've got all the bits and pieces everything rocking and rolling save template now i've got two articles it should have updated your approximate cost so they're saying it's going to be about $44 for those two articles. So that's about $22 an article. Or maybe I want to make it a little cheaper. Let's take it down to uh, three stars. Processing time. Okay, that's fine. Maybe, maybe we knock it down like I say. Maybe we want it 10 days. Does that affect the price? Not really. So let's make it four days. Three days. Okay, fine. That doesn't affect the price that's good so we can play around with that any seo options does that change the price no it does not so good we'll have all those on that's fine and we're going with three stars let's play around with that so that's about 15 dollars an article we'll calculate the order and it'll say okay confirmation about 32 dollars and then it says place binding order Sounds very ominous, but it means, yeah, you've actually committed to getting those two articles done. So we'll do that, and we're good to go. Now, like I say, this can be an expensive way to do it, but you're more assured of quality and getting stuff back. Or you can do it yourself, or you can use one of those other services, or if you want to, you can find an article writer on some forums like the Warrior Forums and sites like that, or you can contact... Um, maybe Odesk and find a cheap article writer. But remember, I, I and that I'll be quite honest, that's what I do most of the time. I have a team of writers now that I have direct contact to that I pay directly monthly from places like Odesk, onlinejobs.ph, which is hiring Philippinians. But if you want authority content, you need it, you, it'll take you time to weed out those, uh, you know, the good article writers versus the bad ones so if you just want to get started don't worry about all that hassle then you might pay that little extra premium by going to somewhere like text broker iWriter and what have you you can kick stuff back it depends on your budget but you've got to determine whether you want to do it yourself uh, and you know work at it yourself save yourself some money or if you want to just throw a little bit of budget behind it you can get going with this and start rocking and rolling and uh, get your content done pretty quick so what we'll do is wait for these articles to come back and then in the next video we're going to uh, get things rock and rolling put them in place and format them and then actually get everything else converted on the back end so let's look at today's action steps from this module so your action steps for today are optimize your site add policies and tracking as we did Create your persona for your site and bio. Decide if you want to write the content yourself or whether you want to outsource it. And then write or get 10 to 20 articles for your site. Now, in the next module, we're going to add the articles to the site and format them once they're done very, very quickly. We're going to create a powerful giveaway. What do we actually give our members to convince them to sign up? What is going to be our incentive? Then we're going to set up what's called the trust builder sequence and then we're going to build a huge responsive list and use that list to create a very solid profit stream we'll also look at some other monetization as well and then we're going to i'm going to show you the secret plugin i use that has boosted email conversions and signups by 300 percent very powerful stuff so with that being said i will see you in the next module in about a week's time We'll rock and roll from there, and you can uh, put all of this stuff into practice. So, as I say, you go through this video, we covered a lot of information today, uh, but I do want you to roll through it, be adaptable. If you hit a roadblock, overcome it, rock and roll from there, and we'll see you in the next module next week. Take care.